Hey guys, welcome back to today's video. Today we're going to go over um, the 2016 presidential election and reasons as to why Donald Trump was able to win the election so handedly, 306 to 232. This is going to be a mini analysis leading up to what I'm going to be moving on to my new series that is going to come up um, after I reach 1,000 1, subscribers. Um, thank you all for reaching 500 sub subscribers. That was a huge milestone for me. Um, I'm halfway to 1,000 and we've been growing at a considerable rate and it's been going very well so this is just going to be um essentially a 500 sub subscriber special um i guess i'll call it that but it's just going to be as a map as to um why hillary clinton lost the election and why donald trump was able to convince so many of the voters to vote for him um I'm, like i said i'll go more into that um with my new series upcoming soon but right now this is just going to be an analysis of what hillary clinton could have done better in order to win the election <clears throat> and the huge swings from tw from 2012 so let's look at this map. This is the 2012 results. Um, the blue are counties uh, or counties that went for Hillary Clinton more than they did for Obama in 2016. Seen California, some blue in Utah, some blue because of Evan McMullen. Um, <clears throat> in Idaho, some blue because of Evan McMullen again. In Texas, is trending more Democratic, but there's a lot of red. But these are in smaller counties and some bigger counties. Um, see, like in Travis County, there's a lot more. Democratic vote because of the Latino population. If you look in states like um, Michigan, Wisconsin, Minnesota, Iowa, Indiana, Ohio, even Illinois, this is just a sea of red. Every single one of these counties overwhelmingly supported Trump more than they did for Obama. If you look at, there's this one county that Romney won, but then Trump won 70%. Um, I haven't found it yet, but it's in Kentucky. Um, so yeah, this is just pretty much the map as you see it right now. Look at the Michigan, Wisconsin, and Pennsylvania. All of these, the Northeast is all a lot more red, except for maybe around Maryland or um, Virginia. But if you look in Michigan and Wisconsin, it's a sea of red. The reasoning behind that is because of the white working class turning away from the Democratic voters, from the Democratic candidates. However, Hillary did have a somewhat close margin in these states. If she just gained 11,000 more votes in Michigan, she would have won Michigan, even with all this red. So it's not like there's a huge wave of white working class breaking away from the Democratic Party, but it's sizable enough to flip the state. Um, before the 2008 elections, um, the, state, the state of Wisconsin was a toss-up. It was actually leaning Bush in the 2004 election, but then it voted for Obama 58% to 40%. We cannot compare um, midterm, I mean, sorry, the middle class and the white working class to 2008 and 2012 numbers with Obama. We should compare them to where Al Gore did um, and where John Kerry, how well they did in these states, because they carried these states. However, however, Hillary Clinton did not. That was extremely surprising. Everyone actually thought, as you know, Hillary, everyone thought Hillary would win the election. It didn't happen. If you look in these key counties, um, a lot more blue than there were in 2016. If you look at state of Michigan now, Look at all that red compared to what it was in 2008. There was almost a sea of blue up there, all red, um, except for one county. So if you look through here, if you look at Wisconsin, it's even worse here for the Democrats. This state was solidly blue. You take a look at Wisconsin now. Solid red everywhere. Here, more Democratic counties than Republican counties. In 2016, a lot more Republican counties. Look at the margins in some of these. 60% in Price County for Donald Trump. If you look at the one in 2008, 55.8% for Barack Obama. If you look at some of these, this one was close. 49.2% to 48.9% in Taylor County. Look at Taylor County now. 70% of the vote goes to Donald Trump. So it's not, this is a huge turn away from the white working class. Sure, like I said, we can't compare it to 2008 numbers. Um... But if you compare them to 2004 numbers, the Democrats still were victors in the states of Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania. Let's let's go to Michigan for a second. If you look in Erie County, this is the county Hillary Clinton was expected to take. 46.4% of the vote there for her. If you go over to Pennsylvania from the 2008 map, um, look at Erie County, how much of it's, it's swung away from the Republicans. 59%, a 20% lead for Barack Obama in 2008. If you look at the... Um, if you look at the results in 2012, I don't think they're loading up right now, but if you look at the results in 2012 for the state of Pennsylvania, um, Barack Obama took a handily. If you look at the map right now and compare it to where it was in 2008, you go to the entire U.S. map. Look at all the blue. 
around here. Then you take the 2012 race, it breaks away a little bit, Indiana and North Carolina. And then you go to 2016, Wisconsin, Iowa, Ohio, Michigan, Pennsylvania, and Florida. Surprisingly, Hillary Clinton was able to hold on to the state of New Hampshire while losing Michigan. There was a time where, I mean, the year 2000, Al Gore was able to hold on to the state of Pennsylvania, was able to hold on to the states of Wisconsin and Michigan, but he lost New Hampshire. He lost Colorado. Um, I'm pretty sure he lost Colorado, but um, for New Mexico, that one voted for Bush in 2004, but then it voted for Hillary Clinton. So a lot of these states stayed with the way they voted in 2012. It was just a, um, a white working class lash against the Democrats. They got tired of 28 years under Democratic rule, and they finally flipped their votes. A lot of people that were in interviewed said they were this is their first time voting for a Republican. You look in Ohio, that one overwhelmingly went for Trump, and almost 52% to 43% for Hillary Clinton. If you look in Iowa, 51.1% to 41.7%. That's a 10-point lead, where Hillary was up by 3% before um, a couple weeks before Election Day. If you look in Florida, Trump won the state, by over 100,000 votes in a swing state like this. Barack Obama didn't even do that well in 2012. New Hampshire, I mean, sorry, New North Carolina he did extremely well. In Virginia, it was too close to comfort, especially since the VP was from the state. However, it did end up going for Hillary Clinton. So a lot of these states were, um, were Clinton states before the Comey letter. I mean, if you look at the map, if you look at the math before the um, James Comey dropped the letter, this likely would have been the outcome. Donald Trump would have probably lost the election if James Comey had not come out before. Because the, um, let's look at Utah for a second. I'll leave, leave that one as yellow. The reasoning behind it is because of Evan McMillan. Before, polling before, um, polling before the election showed Evan McMillan ahead of Donald Trump. After the Comey letter, it went back to Trump. It was because of a lot of the Republicans were not sure as to whether or not they were okay with electing Hillary Clinton. Before, they were saying, Trump can't win, why vote for him? Um, we can vote for someone who we perceive as a true conservative. Well, they came back to Donald Trump because of the um, Clinton letter, and that was likely because they thought that she was super scandal-plagued and they couldn't afford her in the White House. Now, if the Comey letter never dropped, I think this would have been the outcome. I think it would have been 278 to 260. I don't think as many as the white were, a lot of the white working class wouldn't see Hillary Clinton as much as... Um, what they say as a liar, as they do now, um, a lot of these states that went for Donald Trump instead of Hillary Clinton perceived her as, when you ask them, what's the first thing you think about when you see the name Hillary Clinton? They would say liar or um, untrustworthy. So a lot of these states really flip back because of the James Comey letter, and that that's not really something you can argue about. Um, a lot of the early voting, a lot of people changed their votes. In Wisconsin, there was a lot of, you could change your vote in the state of Wisconsin after you cast your early ballot. And a lot of people did that. Um, on CNN, people were being interviewed as to why they um, switched their ballot to Donald Trump. Um, because they saw him in person, and his last minute push, like in the state of Michigan, um, really helped him there. So if we look in the state of, um, where was it? Oh, the state of Arizona. It's trending more Democratic. If you look at the change from 2012, there's a little bit of um, there's a little bit more Democratic counties. If you look in um, 2016, Hillary got more of the vote than Barack Obama did by a small margin, but Mitt Romney got a lot more of the vote than um, President Trump did. President Trump underperformed where Republicans should have done in these states. Like if you look in Yuma County, um, Democrats came within one percent of taking it, whereas they lost it by 13 percent in 2012. If you look in some of these. Republican strongholds, um, Dems expanded their leads, or they just were able to close up the margin. If you look, if you look around here, if you look in Utah, all these states that went for Donald Trump, um, with third party candidates or were have a growing minority population, will end up going for Democrats in the future. If you look at Utah, I don't think that one will go for a Democrat in the future. But if a conservative runs again and Donald Trump is unlike, just like the, the Democrat was, I think an independent could do very well in the state of Utah. Now, let's just get back on topic about the white working class. The white working class lashed away from the Democratic Party. Um, the reasoning behind that is basically they've been lied to about their jobs, about their um, positions in the economic phase. I mean, the um, auto bailout in Michigan should have really helped Hillary Clinton, but she didn't come, she didn't capitalize on it. She barely visited the state of Michigan. She only visited the state of Wisconsin 
before the convention. And in the state of Pennsylvania, that one should have been a shock to Democrats. They held their convention there. That one was surprising to me as well. Um, but if we just look at the state map, all the things you see in red right now, um, Iowa, Wisconsin, Michigan, Ohio, Pennsylvania, and Florida were all, were all states that Obama won. So Democrats are going to need to come back and say, where did we go wrong? Well, you went wrong with the white working class. You need to appeal to them next time. Where else did you go wrong? You went wrong with Latino voters. You expected them to land you a victory in the state of Florida. That didn't happen, overwhelmingly. Um, Dem Trump won more Latino voters than Romney did. And they, his entire campaign, um, his first campaign speech was built on calling out illegal immigrants. Sure, Democrats said that that was racist, but a lot of Latino voters saw that he was calling out illegal immigrants, not legal immigrants. So there was a huge swing away from the Democratic Party. They are now at their worst point since the year um, after the Civil War. So right now it's just all about them getting back to white working class. I don't think they can flip Iowa and Ohio in future elections unless they nominate a really good candidate. Florida may flip. Um, North Carolina, I see, has a possibility of flipping. That one went for Romney, even though Obama won the election, so it's not really going with the victor most of the time. Um, it's just, I think it should be lean red from now on. I don't think that it should be perceived as a swing state because that one's not really swinging back to the Democrats unless they have a, they have a really good candidate, like a moderate Democrat. Um, so yeah, let me just wrap up this video by saying Democrats need to do a lot better than they did this year with white working class voters and they need to get their base out to vote. There are 80 million registered Democrats and Hillary Clinton only got 65 million votes. So, and that's including the independent vote that she got. So Democrats really need to get their base out. Um, and Republicans do need to too. However, Republicans don't have as many registered as Democrats do. So it's all on to the Democrats. I mean, like Donald Trump has been saying, the electoral map is poised to help them win. As long as they win these three states, which have solidly gone to them for 28 years, then they win the election. They just need to hold on to Virginia and areas that are trending more Democratic. And if you look at Iowa and Ohio and Florida, they can lose. They can afford to lose Georgia, North Carolina, Ohio, Iowa, Florida, um, and even New Hampshire. So these are not need to win states, but need to win states for the Democrats should be Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania. I'm gonna get more into this in my new um, video, my new video series. So thank you all for watching. Remember, comment below if you're early to this video. Notification squad, and I'll see you all tomorrow.